I am Crystal Hart and we are at the Italian Cultural Institute here in New York City on Park Avenue between 68th and 69th Street and we are here for the Richard Genori collection dating back to 1735 and let's take a walk around. The rarest of Italian porcelains, ceramics, wax, terracotta and plaster pieces which once graced the palaces and premier estates of Europe, can now be viewed in an exhibit at the Italian Cultural Institute of New York. The exhibit, entitled Richard Genori, 1737 to 1937, comprises some 160 pieces of cultural and functional objects, such as teapots, vases, ice cream holders, lamps, candlesticks, figurines, and even soap dishes. These extraordinarily rare pieces were produced over the last 300 years by Richard Genori, Italy's leading creator of porcelains and one of the oldest manufacturers of such ceramics in Europe. This collection of rare objects has never before left Italy, only recently making a first appearance in the United States, beginning the first leg of a year-long U.S. tour in Washington, D.C. We had the idea, as the, uh, the museum is settled in a town called Sesto Fiorentino, close to Florence, and uh, we thought that sometimes the tourists do not have time to go and see the museum because in Florence there are so many beautiful things to watch. So we thought that the good idea was to tour around the museum and to make the great, the great tour that in the past, in the 18th and 17th centuries, were made by the rich people to see the archaeological sites in Italy and uh, in south of Italy, Pompeii, Ercolano. So we were moving around the museum with the plates reproducing these sites. And so this was the opposite. We were talking around the museum. This was the idea. And so what are you going to do? And uh, it's a lot of porcelain, uh, ceramics, well, and, and we're, we're, how far does it date back to? Well, there are uh, 200 pieces. Uh, since uh, 1737 and the oldest things are these uh, vases because they're called uh, vases for the, uh, for the earth, for the terre because these were the first studies made by Carlo Ginori was trying to find the right proportion of kaolin and felspat and quartz in order to make the porcelain and uh, because it was very, very difficult so it took more than two years to create this right combination and then he managed to do it and so he settled the, the factory and the, start, the factory started really in 1737. These were the most pro precious things and they were made in uh, all in 1740s and 50. As you can see the, the how, how they were made, how fragile was the combination the, from the inside and outside. And it was a typical pattern with blue reproducing and imitating on the beginning the Chinese uh, art. Because you know the China, it's called China because it comes from, from China. And so they were reproducing the pattern in the beginning. And then they started with uh, uh, autonomy and reproducing the colors and uh, the um, design collected by Carlo Ginor itself. And so for this reason, the museum is so important because there was an ident identification between the factory and the museum itself. These are two candlesticks made in 1783 and uh, they belong to the parish church and with, uh, they will be lent to the museum itself. And uh, we have four of those, one are big and one too small, and here we present only the two big. And uh, they are very uh, nice because it is dif very difficult to be found because uh, it's one of the earliest examples of uh, uh, porcelain in so perfect condition. Here we can find the replica, not the replica, the reproduction of Kamei. It's just a small part of the collection, of Carlo Ginori collection. And he was collecting uh, these Kamei because they were used to make uh, the, the small, you see the small face on the tobacco container, the porcelain there? Okay, they were using this kamei in order to make all these containers and it was very very precious in the past because they were made in, in sulfur or in hard uh, wax and uh, they were extremely expensive so this collection is really uh, absolutely uh, uh, 
precious. And these nice plates were made in 1910. And as you can see, this is the more significant, is uh, the middle one is, uh, um, shows um, uh, the um, Ercolano and Pompeii when, when they were digged, because they were digging and trying to rec recover the, um, the antiquity from uh, uh, the, the past, because this one was covered by, by lava in the 79 after Christ. This is very special because it is a Carlo Ginori bust and when the founder, as you can see from, from the support, he set up the, the manufacturing in 1737. We're with the new director of, oh. uh, yes, <laughs> of the Italian Cultural Center, your name now? Renato Miracco. Uh, like a new director of Italian Culture Institute in New York. And you come from Italy? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, I, first I was in London because I was inside at Tate Modern in London. Uh, then my next exhibition at Met uh, here in New York is my exhibition about Giorgio Morandi. So I'm really addicted to all the cultural and art events here in New York. Okay, and what are your plans? Are any new plans for...? Oh, it's, uh, I've not plans. I have just a dream. Just to rebuild this uh, um, building and just to increase all and high profile uh, the events, the cultural events here in New York. I would like exactly to do this. Uh, it's only three months that I am here, but maybe I have some dream to to create, for example, just a foundation for fundraising, a foundation for uh, uh, American institutional advisor that can, can give me just an help to advise from some events and so on. The exhibit runs through Tuesday, March 18, 2008, and is free of charge and open to the public weekdays, Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, March 15th and Sunday, March 16th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. The Institute is located at 686 Park Avenue between 68th and 69th Streets.